Hey guys, this is Nail Gun Nelly. No, I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, so in today's episode, I want to show a general overview first of our electrical system. So this is pretty much the same type of system that we usually install on all of our RVs. And later I'll have Chad go into more depth on all the different areas. But just to show you what we're working with, I laid everything out here for you. So the first thing we have is this 200 watt monocrystalline rigid solar panel and this will be mounted to the roof of the RV. It comes with the roof brackets, and then we have both our positive and negative lines that connect to it and go in through the roof through this little solar cap so that everything looks clean and they're protected because you do need to drill into the hole, I mean, into the roof. And then next, they would come down and feed into our PWM solar charge controller. And we also have a smart battery charger, which is your shore power um, charge controller. And then we always choose to go with a lithium ion battery. And these are much more reliable. They can actually be stored on their side or upright. So you have more flexibility and where you can put them. And with the lithium ion battery, you can deplete the charge all the way to zero without harming it. And there's much more charge cycles with this type of battery rather than like a lead base. They are more pricey, but definitely worth it in the end. And then the last thing is the DC fuse box. And this is for all of your 12 volt items in the trailer. So any lights that you want to be able to use when you have no hookups, all of your appliances, and then it has a bunch of different fuses that have different amps. And depending on if you're running your fridge or your stovetop or whatever it is that's hooked up to each one of these, you get the appropriate fuse, put it in. And a good thing about that is if you're storing your RV or something like that, you can take out any fuses that belong to like appliances so that you ensure they don't drain your battery while in storage. So that's kind of a general overview of all of this. And now um, we'll go and start installing it. And as we do, Chad will give you a little more in depth on each step. So as Janelle mentioned, this is your 200 watt monocrystalline rigid solar panel. Okay. And so the main thought before you buy it is you want to know how much solar power you need and you can do that easily your appliances will all have a, a watt rating on them basically how much energy they use and so there's multiple calculators online and you can use your calculators to uh, let you know how much solar power you need so if you have a ton of appliances that are running you're going to need more solar power if you're only going to have a couple things you might not need a lot of solar power power at all so with the appliances that we are going to be running, you know, some DC lights, uh, refrigerator or water pump, etc. We found that 200 watts is going to be sufficient for us. So our battery will not die and it will fully recharge every single day. And so here it is. And then on the back side, there are the wires. It's super easy. There's two wires. And the two wires simply plug in to the ends on your solar wires here, okay? And we'll go over this during the install, but those then get fed into your PWM controller. And so this little controller here receives the charge from the solar and it's connected to the battery. And so not only does it receive the charge from the solar panels but it detects the state of charge of the battery and it will charge the battery appropriately at that point so if the battery is really low this thing actually has three stages of charging so basically like a aggressive charge a medium charge and then what they call a float charge so if your battery is essentially pretty much full it will keep it full and just trickle in a little power to keep it there so this little guy here does all the work for you and that's really it as far as the solar goes. Solar panel gets the sun power, goes into the charge controller, and it charges the battery. All right. And the next nice thing here is a smart battery charger. And so we're getting power from the sun, 
but now we're also getting power from the shore power. So if you're at a campsite where you can plug in, this guy here is going to take the 120 volts from the shore power and it's going to convert it to 12 volts. And then it's gonna send those 12 volts to charge again, your battery. And this thing too has three stages of charging. So it will detect how much power it needs to give the battery. It'll charge it aggressively, moderately, and then it'll float it as well. From there, the battery's charged. We're charging it two different ways. And so then the battery is going to be fed to your fuse box and the fuse box is going to be live. And so your fuse box is going to have power and you're going to connect all your appliances to the fuse box. And so from there, you're just going to run wires to like your fridge or your water pump or your lights, and they're all going to be powered. And you're going to put these little fuses inside the fuse block. And that's real nice because if you have a power surge, it'll blow the fuse and it won't harm your appliance. And also like Janelle mentioned, if you want to remo remove the uh, fuse, it will cut the power completely from the appliance. So for instance, like even when it's completely off, your fridge will pull a little power. And if you're going to store it for several months, you can just uh, remove the fuse itself and it won't drain the battery passively while you're not using your trailer. So like Chad was mentioning, to be able to calculate your solar power needed, you can go to eTrailer and I will link it in the description below so that you can do those calculations so that you can make sure you get the right setup. Okay, so now we have the solar panel upside down and what we're gonna do is put all of the Z mounts on to the solar panel so that when we get it up there, it's ready to be mounted. So um, from eTrailer, they actually come with the butyl already attached, so you'll just have to remove it once you get up there. But prior to that, you're gonna wanna place them in the pre-drilled holes. So it comes with the screws and bolts. So basically you're, the main thing is you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't install it this way because you won't be able to access. Make sure it's on the outside of the solar panel so when you get it up there, you can drill into the roof. And then you just secure it with the provided uh, screw and bolt. I'll show you over here. I have one already kind of put in so it's loose. Coming in through the bottom, it makes it easier to access the top bolt. You're gonna screw it down, make sure it's straight, and then just tighten it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all four of these mounts, two on either side, and then we'll take it up onto the roof and we'll show you the next step. All right, so now that we have it all ready, we are taking it up onto the trailer roof Chad's gonna go up first. And then I'm gonna steal the ladder and go on the other side and we'll see you back up there. You good? Yeah. Okay, so we have it up on the roof and we made sure that we pressed down on our ceiling to make sure that we're gonna be going into a stud. So I placed mine over the two studs that we know are here and now I'm gonna keep it in this space and I'm just gonna pick up a tiny bit, just enough to remove the backing of the butyl. I'm also gonna remove the tape that I put and then I'm gonna push it down and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And so now it, butyl's kind of sticky so it's in place and we're gonna do the same thing on those. And then all we're gonna do is just drill directly into the pre-drilled holes. There's two in each bracket. And that's all there is to mounting the actual panel. Get that speed. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so we have the entire panel secured with the eight different screws. And now you can see we have the two wires coming out here. So we're gonna go on the inside of the trailer and we are gonna drill a hole up where we know that we can bring the wires out and we'll show you how we connect them.
Okay, so I came into the trailer and the solar panel is actually mounted on the roof in this vicinity. So if I go in this closet, this is where we're gonna keep all of our stuff. And this vent pipe that you see right here is the one that we saw up on the roof. So we know because of where that vent pipe is coming out that the, the area in this spot is free and clear on the roof. So our plan is Chad is up on the roof and he is gonna drill a hole down into this spot so that we can run the wires in and then we can pin them up against the wall and make this whole entire utility closet our nice little solar setup. Okay, Chad. You're in. Um, you have tons of room towards the back or the front. Are you gonna, where are you gonna put the wires when they come in? I know, but are you gonna do it on the shower wall or are you gonna do it on the back wall? Okay, so I would go, uh, like how much farther away are you going? Okay, I would go closer to the vent then. Yeah. Okay. So we have two holes for both the red and the black wire. Are you gonna feed those in? Okay. Yeah. So we have the red wire coming in. Do you want me to pull it? So I'm basically just pulling all of the wire in. And now I'm getting the black wire. So I have all the wire and then I'll show you what he's doing up top. So this is where he drilled in and this is the cover that you feed them through and they go in to these little screw things. And it's the whole point of this is wire management. It keeps them down and looking good from afar and then also preventing any water leakage into your holes that you drilled into your camper. So from here, these will get secured to those and this will get butyl on it and screw into the top and everything will be secure and the rest of it is all down in the trailer. Okay, so last step now that we have everything secure is to take your lap sealant, just like all of the other vents and we're just going to put it all around the border. And this is self-leveling, so it will flatten out and around the screws. And so I'm gonna do that to all four brackets. And then I'm also going to do it, this little mount that we have the solar wires going into, and these are feeding into the closet and that's all there is to it up on the roof. And we are going to go back inside now. Okay, so now that we're done feeding the wires in through the roof that are connected to the solar panels, the next step is to come inside and take those wires and connect them to this. And this is our PWM controller. And basically this is how the solar power from the solar panels comes in, goes into this, and then you connect these wires that have little connectors for your battery. And they bring the energy from the solar panels from this to the battery. So the cool thing about the PWM controller is that it actually senses the charge of the battery. So it'll basically, if the battery's running low, it's going to take all of the power that it's getting from the solar and send it to the battery in order to keep it charged. But if the battery is looking good, you're not using a lot of power, it's basically what's called floating. It's going to just maintain the power and only give it to the battery when it needs it. Okay, so this closet we've kind of designated as our little utility closet. And so this is where the wires are coming from the roof. And so we're gonna just make sure that we have good wire management and we're gonna keep them um, on this back wall. And then the battery will be going down here in this corner. Um, and so basically we're gonna just run the wires from here, 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 and then along down. 
Um, on here you can see it's very simple. There's four little areas to screw in. So we're gonna just screw it directly into this back wall. And then it basically walks you through. This is the positive and negative from the solar panel that goes into these. This is the positive and negative for the battery. And so the wires that we put in here will lead to the battery. And then they have, we're not gonna use these, but there is the option to be able to run your 12 volt lights off of this. But we have a fuse block we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna mount this and then install the wires and we'll go from there. Okay, so we're gonna mount this, but um, first you are gonna want to hook these up in a certain sequence. And first step is to hook the battery up. So these are the two um, lines that I showed you and they connect to the negative and positive bolts on top. And this is pretty much your battery setup. We are gonna move this right into this cubby right here. And then we don't know how much line we need. So basically we're gonna just measure without securing it in place up the wall across and to right here, leaving a little slack so that we can put them both into the positive and negative of the battery. So that's step one. Okay, so we have it mounted and we have the lines coming in from our battery down below going into the middle two and then these lines coming in second into the two solar. And so you wanna make sure you put the battery ones in first followed by the solar panel and um, you can see on the monitor that the battery is smiling and is happy and solar power is coming into the battery. And then there is also power going out if we were to hook up, like there actually are USBs where we could like charge a phone if we wanted, um, or if we were to utilize these, we could pull power now and run our lights if we wanted. Okay, the next step that we are gonna do is put our battery charger converter. So basically this is only gonna work if you are plugged into shore power. So if you're like at a campsite or at your house and you have a way of plugging in a 120. So what this is gonna do, it's kind of like a backup system um, for your battery to make sure that it doesn't lose all of its power. Say it's really not sunny or whatever, you're using a lot of power, using a lot of your solar panels. Um, this can kick in to make sure that you never lose complete um, charge of your batteries. And the other function that it does is it converts 120 into 12 volts. So like your AC system into your DC system. Um, this has a fuse panel within it and you basically mount it to the wall and we'll plug it in and show you how we set it up. All right, so in closing, just a quick summary of what we did. The solar panels get mounted to the roof and then they come in through your trailer um, and you have the little enclosure that goes over where they enter into the trailer to prevent any water intrusion. You bring them down and enter them into your PWM controller. And from there, you're gonna bring them over into um, connecting into your lithium ion batteries. And really that is all there is to that system. And you will just include that with other aspects of our of electrical within your camper, which we have another video that we will be going in depth on everything. Um, but for the solar setup, that is about it. So if you found this video to be useful, I'd love if you would subscribe and give this video a like, there'll be more content coming your way. Like always, I will be sure to link everything we used in this video in the description below and leave any questions you have in the comments and we'll be sure to answer them all. Mm -hmm.